Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be going through a very special video. Um, if you are outside of the Funko Pop collecting world and collect other designer toys, you are familiar with Sket One, and he's an incredible graffiti artist and now designer. But if you do collect other designer toys, you might be familiar with the current situation going on between him and Super Plastic. So I had the wonderful opportunity to interview him um, about the issue about what's going on and other things that he has coming up. So that is what today's video is going to be. I hope you guys enjoy it. There's a lot of really good information, especially if you are an artist or designer yourself, you know, something like this could happen. So it's nice to be prepared, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and let's get into it. And welcome to a very special video that I'm super excited to be doing today. We are going to be talking with an amazing artist. And for those of you who don't know, he is going to give you a little bit about himself, but I would like to give a wonderful welcome to my guest today, the legendary artist, Skit One. <laughs> welcome, thank, thank you thank for coming up. Thank you for the great intro. Um, very welcome. Well, sir. Um, hello. Thank you again for having me. I appreciate it. Um, I am, my name is Andrew Yazgar. I go by the artist name, uh, Sket One. I grew up a graffiti writer um, in the late 80s, early 90s. I did graffiti and still do graffiti to this day. Um, I ended up becoming a uh, sign art director, which kind of was my transition from graffiti to the commercial world. And then right. from there, I got into um, uh, graphic design, marketing, um, doing uh, art direction for a lot of uh, sports stuff and uh actually started to make my own merchandise, which I started to get into toy design. Uh, in 2004, um, I was introduced to Tristan Eaton. At that time, he was uh, uh, helping to start a company called Kid Robot with uh, Paul Budnitz. And um, that particular uh, meeting turned into a lifetime of designing art toys and designer vinyl. And uh, here I am today. <laughs> and I mean, you do a pretty good job, if Thank I you. do say so myself. That is my Greeper watch. I mean, I did like a cool little reel on it. You saw it, but yep. it is so super much. sick. I'll have it popped up for everybody to see, but I Thank love you so much. It's, I thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, so the first thing that I would like to cover is the elephant in the room, obviously. <laughs> Why don't you... Oh, it's... <laughs> the elephant has been let loose. <laughs> yeah, it is far out of the room by now and all over the place. Um, why don't you walk us through, if you don't mind, a little bit about what's going on with Super Plastic. If you can kind of start with... Um, what exactly you guys were working on and then what obviously is the yep. now occurring issue if you don't mind so, so back in 2019 um a very good friend of mine huck reached out to me and him and uh paul budnitz once again the uh creator of kid robot and uh the creator of super plastic along with huck uh, reached out to me and, uh, um, you know, we were working on similar projects. I helped them with getting funding. I've, um, you know, they were friends of mine. So I was very excited to help them have their company come to fruition and to actually start to put out some really cool stuff again. Um, so, uh, with all toy companies, you know, there's, um, uh, each project gets a contract and those contracts are uh, written and, you know, 
you have to overlook them and agree to them and sign them, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Huck contacts me and reaches out to me and says, we want you to create a version of the eight inch janky, which is super plastics toy called the janky. And it was a large version. And uh, of course, me being me, if you know my work, I do a lot of changing of sculpts and mashing, you know, like the ketchup, you know, where I take the, the ear of the dunny and I turn it into a bottle. And I do a lot of mashing of things with other things to create this new thing. I'll have a bunch of your art uh, pop up for okay. <laughs> everybody so they can get a gist of what you're talking about. Yeah. So um, in doing so, um, I created what is referred to as the Cranky. Um, the Cranky is basically um, the head of the janky reshaped, um, redrawn um, into a, um, it was oval, it's circular now. And it had a spray paint, um, uh, vintage spray paint uh, top and nozzle and, you know, to convey a can of paint. Mm -hmm. In doing so, in doing so and changing the shape, that's, um, we're going to get really heady with law right now. It, it becomes derivative work of the original work. And under my particular contract, it said that I owned all the rights to my artwork. So redrawing the head, I owned all the rights. And the fact that it was derivative work, I owned the rights to that derivative work. Okay. In doing so, we came out with uh, 16 or 18 different versions under my name and under my brand and, you know, as a collab with Super Plastic. Um, we came out with 10 colors right away and then six California colors. And then we had, you know, two 15 inch and, you know, I came out with the three inch and the janky series and all this stuff. And for each thing, contracts were written and all my contracts stated that I was creator of the artwork and own the rights to the artwork. So in doing so, I copyrighted my shape. Um, I get a call from Super Plastic, asked uh, from Huck, um, <laughs> a very, <laughs> a very nonchalant, you know, kind of just regular call, you know, like I've had a thousand times. And Huck was telling me that we own the shape, and I, I explained to him that you don't. And we went back and forth, kind of just joking, but you know, we're friends. And uh, he was like, "But well, we do," and I was like, "No, you don't." And went through all back and forth that. So. I said, listen, if you want to negotiate something in a contract, you know, hit me up. Um, a month went by and they started to release the shape in a blank format, 15 inch versions, which I was not getting royalties for. And then they came out with an, a different artist version, which I was not receiving royalties for. And at the same time this was going on, NFTs were going on, and I had a separate contract for NFTs, which I was absolutely happy with. But then they released NFTs with different artists' work, but it was still my shape. So technically my contract covered the, you know, that stuff. So yeah, so basically that's where the whole uh, you know, problem came in. I was like, you know, you guys are releasing all this stuff and I should be getting my percentages. They argued that I shouldn't. And that's when, you know, uh, basically lawyers started to talk. And as, you know, lawyers do, lawyers go back and forth and stuff. And it got to a particular point where I was very frustrated. Um, I was receiving no um, feedback and no negotiations whatsoever at all. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to let the world know about this because have you, are you impressed by the way? I mean, you're obviously an impressive guy, but are you impressed with how big the social media push has been on this? Um, I appreciate it. I absolutely appreciate everyone's that that's reposted and talked about it. And 
there's a lot of nuances to the particular situation that a lot of people aren't familiar with, nor should they be. Um, there's a lot of design laws and there's a lot of, you know, copyrights and trademarks and this and that and this to, to understand. And just from talking to my lawyers, um, you know, it's very heady <laughs> and it takes a lot of uh, understanding. Um, I'm super excited that people have supported me and I'm very thankful. And um, was I surprised? No, because I think when artists are taken advantage of, I think, you know, the community has always been there to support that particular artist. Um, you saw it with Futura and uh, North Face. Um, I've seen it in the past with other artists. Um, well, all of this is really important to know, especially for smaller artists starting out, you know, absolutely. when they get their break with a bigger company, knowing, you know, that this kind of thing can happen. Absolutely. I think it's very important. And that was one of the main reasons why I made it public. You know, um, I think artists need to realize that, you know, when they're signing contracts, that they, they should look through contracts and they should know what the contracts are stating. Contracts can be very vague and these companies can kind of hide behind the vagueness of the contracts. And sometimes you should actually rewrite the contracts and actually say, no, I don't like this whatsoever at all. And that's OK. You're allowed to do that. You know, that's what, you know, negotiation and, you know, creating contracts is all about is uh, me personally. You know, I've been doing like like I said, I've been doing this for over 20 years. And I've worked with a ton of different companies, big, huge companies to small independent companies. And, um, you know, it takes both kinds to kind of screw you over. That's, that's why I went public, you know, is to um, not only look for support, which I'm, I'm glad I got it and I'm thankful I have it, but to inform people that this stuff still goes on. And, you know, even somebody like me, as people will say, Oh, a seasoned veteran or, you know, whatever you want to say, these issues still come up and still arise. So <laughs> are you, I, this might be a silly question, but um, have you s seen the super plastic statement made uh, in one of their Facebook groups? Yeah. I did with their do I did. You mind that's, that's, that's Paul and mm -hmm. uh, uh, he's the owner of uh, super plastic the CEO whatever you want to call him and um, um, I guess all I could say is I disagree with the whole statement I mean there's things in there I mean what I found funny is the fact that he says that he was confused and he doesn't know why. And it's been a year. So he clearly shouldn't be confused and should and should know why. And the other thing on there is he talks about trademarks and contracts. And then at the end, they want me to reach out with no lawyers involved. It's like, wait a minute. I'm gonna have a statement pop up for everybody to understand what so you're I'm talking about. So I'm sitting there and I'm like reading it and I'm going, okay, contract, trademarks, contract okay, contact me, but no lawyers involved. It's like, what? You know, so, um, so yeah. <laughs> Did you, so where, where's your current state at this moment in time? Current state is, uh, we're going to talk. We're going to, we're going to talk. So um, that's all I have on that right now. Um, we're going to talk and we're going to uh, move forward and hopefully we can come to some sort of an agreement. I mean, that's the objective. At the end of the day, that was my objective when of course. Um, it was happening over a year and a half ago. It's my objective, you know, two months ago. It's my objective now. I, I, I don't want this kind of stuff. You know, I have too many things going on and, you know, I don't want to have to be bothered with this kind of stuff, but, you know, as an individual, as an artist, as, um, 
a creative, you have to put your foot down because if you don't put your foot down, then they're just going to do it to somebody else and they're going to keep doing it. So not only am I fighting for myself, I'm fighting for others. And these kind of situations are always like that. You know, um, if a client doesn't pay you for work, then that client's going to do that to somebody else. Don't think it stops with you. So has this changed, um, at all? And if it has what with, like in how you normally do business with companies, is this is the way you do things or how like collaborations work? Do you see yourself doing anything different maybe in the future? Yeah. I just had a great, you know, it's like I said, um, you go into these projects, like I just had, you know, Abominal um, and oh, yeah. Plastic Empire. Um, mm -hmm. I just came out with the phase one Abominal. And it took two and a half years to produce. And, you know, they are really cool. There you go. There it is. This, this project was long. It was difficult as far as production, but neither side was ever like, screw it. We're not doing it. Or, you know, it, we, we both had our hearts in it. We both had the passion to get the project done and completed. And, and everything was fair and even and, and, you know, promotion wise, it was, you know, projects like this are more so than the projects than what I'm going through with super plastic. You know, I have more good than bad. And I think most artists do. It's just, um, Hopefully. you know, it's an unfortunate situation. That's what it comes down to. But for me to just, you know, glaze it over and be like, it doesn't exist. I'd be lying to everybody in it. It does exist. And you as an artist, not only have to be an artist and in charge of marketing and in charge of, you know, social media and in charge of, you know, your website and listing stuff and shipping stuff and creating art and, you know, doing shows and doing all that. You need to know some law behind your art. You need to know your rights. You need to know, you know, before you sign a contract, you need to be confident that the contract that you're signing is you're protected or, you know, um, I've done a ton of deals on a handshake, you know, and I have no problems whatsoever at all, you know, and in fact, sometimes I would rather it that way, you know, because I, I don't know, it just seems more authentic and that the person is being like, yeah, I'm not going to do, you know, I don't know. It just seems different. Oh, no, I, there's, you know? there's, but, I mean, so much behind handshake, but do you, so you don't imagine yourself being like not doing the handshake deals anymore, or do you still believe that? No, no, I, I still will. I still will. You know, I'll still work with small companies. I'll still work with big companies. What's most important to me is if the collaboration makes sense and it's authentic you know i if something didn't make any sense to me then i i would be honest and i'd be like listen i like i understand that you sell razors but i can, <laughs> you know I, yeah i use a razor but i'm not into designing you know a razor so um you know what i mean i just there yeah. needs to be some authenticity there so i don't see myself stopping the handshake I don't see myself stopping, you know, um, uh, you know, doing collabs and stuff, but I do see myself, you know, being more, a little bit more apprehensive, you know, um, I'm more cautious. I've been, I've been for the last two years, uh, you know, even with the project with I am retro and the Greeper, you know, that was all produced with, with, uh, uh, Omar from I am retro and like we were in charge of everything about that like the packaging and you know just everything every aspect of that and I see myself doing that more so if I do collab with people I'm going to be bringing it in house and concentrating on the project myself rather than having companies concentrate on the project you know I'll be I'll be really involved in everything just so 
you know, everything's cool uh-huh. and copacetic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, fair to to want to know what's going on. Um, yeah. Okay. So, sorry, go ahead. No, go, go, shoot. <laughs> okay. Um, it is truly disheartening to hear anybody going through something like this, but I do hope that it gets resolved uh, as quickly as possible. And I mean, hopefully you guys can work it out to where, you know, it, works out in both parties and then everybody can kind of just move yep. on from the situation and go back to creating incredible art, which speaking of, why don't we go into a brighter topic on <laughs> some of the collabs that you're working on? Yeah, for sure. Um, let's see. Uh, as far as the Griepers is concerned, we have a new version coming out at um, in October. And um, I'm really looking forward to that particular version because, uh, it, it, you know, this is going to be um, this is going to be the third version of Creeper. We have the OG version, which is on the watch. And then we have the Black Death version. And um, we have uh, this next version, which I think everybody's going to be super, super happy with. Um, uh, I love Greeper, and the reason why I love Greeper is because it's like a dark, kind of funny take on graffiti. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just you know, it's one of those figures that you know when I when I started designing it and I you know did the Sith, and it was a roller, a dripping roller. It was just I don't know, it's just comical. You know, those are all aspects of graffiti that you really don't think about, but they come into play every time you go paint and stuff like that. So um, I I really like that project. It's a project that I've been down with. And I usually do a lot of like cute, colorful stuff, you know, and, and kind of, you know, uh, you know, my, my, my cartoon characters like Ripple and Dripple and, uh, you know, this ghost that I do and they're all happy and they're all, you know, kind of, you know, even Ting is, uh, you know, there's some comical sense to it, which is the farting elephant. Sure. Um, Greeper kind of gave me that little, you know, chance to be like, hey, let me go over to this side. So I enjoy it. <laughs> I enjoy it. I have uh, my sketch sum that I created as a custom, which let me grab it. So this guy right here, these are, there we go. It's like a little dim sum kind of. I, um, it looks like a, like a <laughs> bow. Is that what it's yeah, called? Yeah, bow. A bow. Yeah, bow. I always see. Steamed I buns. So, so I did this as a custom and I did 20 of them and I signed them and they came in this little plastic steamed bun um, container. And um, what I ended up doing is creating a three pack and I'm actually doing a production version. So these will be out, I would say within a month or two. I'm you know? sorry, is, does, is that, does that feel like a doubling? Yeah, well, it's, so like it's, it's a squeezable. switch. Yeah. Oh, I'm like, is that? like jiggling or is it just yeah no no it's it's totally like a dumpling and it's totally like one of those stress toys it's going to be for rising foam it's going to be rising foam but there's going to be three of them so they're they're a lot smaller and um but uh yeah they're called sketch sums so that's coming so i'm looking forward to that because that's a self-produced toy and that's what i'm going to be getting into a lot more is just self-producing myself you know and putting out stuff like you have that, that coding model. Yeah. <laughs> so <Can> you... <laughs> every, everyone, it's funny because um, I do a series called Hood Goods. And all the hood goods are basically kind of like um, uh, products that you would find in a bodega or you would find, you know, in the city in the hood or something like that. 
And um, hold on. I'm sorry. Hold on. <laughs> Lily, baby, give me one minute, please. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Go ahead. No, it's absolutely fine. I can grab these while we're talking about them. So, excuse me. All right. Let me get situated again. Okay, so the hood goods are basically um, products. This is an, an artist proof of a 40L that I did. Um, this is called 40 Joe. And uh, 40 Joe, once again, I did with I Am Retro. And um, this is resin. Um, it is in vinyl. It's super heavy. And uh, these characters are all handmade in the U.S. And um, the hood goods characters... Yeah basically expand now um my fr my good friend kevin he runs sip lean which is a um clothing that basically clothing company that kind of gives props to the lean culture which was uh which is you know super popular in an underground culture and um he wanted to create something he was like hey man can we can we do a collab and like I was going back to the beginning where I was talking about working with small companies, you know, I was totally up for it. So um, this particular guy was the first of this series. We've actually put out three now. And it's all, they're all different lean bottles and they come with the double cup. Where are they? That is incredible. It comes double cup and it's you know, oh. ice in it. And so, um, so yeah, these projects are, you know they're they're fun to work on they're you know it's, is it something necessarily that you know i would go out and like i i got a lot of flack a lot of people contact me and they're like you know oh you're promoting drug use and da 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 da, da. and i'm like not really i'm just i'm just trying to have fun at the it's end of like, the day okay horror movies <laughs> promoting murder yeah okay i know day, i'm just trying to have fun yeah. you know and um uh this Working with Cipline has dangerous. always been an absolute blast. They're a great company, um, and uh, we do great projects together. And that's once again, that's a you know, that's a perfect example of working with a small company, handshakes involved, friends putting out cool stuff, and helping each other. You know, you know. So it's uh, that's why it's going to be very hard for me to stop because my objective in the last 20 years is to work with people is to build a community and, and to have relationships with different people within the community and Don't to, stop. and to literally support the community, you know? And, yeah. um, you know, I, back to the super plastic thing, it's, it's, it's not anything you can, you know, um, you can control it, but it's not anything that you can stop. You have to keep, you know, just because everything's, going good for you and you know you're having a good time with everybody else you know there might be a situation that pops up and you got to handle it you know and and that's basically kind of what that situation came out to be it's being handled so because i deal a lot in funko yep any collapse coming with funko i wish ever? if they reach yeah. out to me i would jump at it you know, yeah. um, a lot of a lot of designer toy artists, you know, um, are got upset at Funko, you know, when they first came onto the scene and stuff. Um, but I welcomed you, it. I was like, you could do incredible things to their art series. Uh, it I was would, a great idea, but they pretty much like they they're not great. They, all of them have tanked in value. Reese, if you're well, if you got any hookups, you know, make it happen. I'm, I'm down. Please I'm down. say, well, thank you so much again. I really thank do you. appreciate you. I mean, answering, coming on. Yeah, no problem. No problem. I appreciate the, the airtime, so to say. <laughs> and that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I love you. I will see you in the next one.